Does NASCAR need a dirt race on the schedule? For the first time since 2013, none of NASCAR's top three divisions will be racing on dirt. Of course, the trucks got the dirt party started back in 2013 when they raced at Eldor for the Mud Summer Classic, Dirt Derby, whatever you want to refer to it as, as long as Major League Baseball doesn't try to sue you for it. And then they went on to Knoxville, and then, of course, the Bristol Dirt Race happened, and the Cup Series joined them uh, in 2021 and ran three races on Bristol Dirt, which was kind of a failed experiment because they switched back to Concrete Bristol, and it posted a better rating this year than the Bristol Dirt Race did last year in prime time on a holiday. Now, granted, racing on Easter, people in the South, that's certainly going to hamper things potentially. But the fact of the matter is, the cup race from Bristol on concrete this spring was up 11% over what it was last year. 3.809 million viewers tuned in this week, with 4.5 million viewers tuning in between that 7 p.m. and 7.15 uh, p.m. time slot right there to catch the chaos that was Bristol. So the question is, does there need to be a dirt race? Personally, I don't think stock cars belong on dirt. And I think the numbers kind of back up why racing on Bristol concrete is a bit better. In the three cup races at Bristol on the dirt, there were a combined 15 lead changes over those three races. Just for the sake of comparison, this past weekend's race at Bristol had 54 different lead changes, more than 14 more than the previous record on the concrete. And sure, did the tire wear contribute to that? Absolutely, and certainly green flag pit stops did as well. But when you look at it, the Bristol dirt races were really never that compelling from the lead, at least. Generally, somebody would get out front and lead like 100 laps, and then somebody else would get out front and lead like 70 laps, and then would kind of be maybe back and forth between the two of them. The only really good finish that we had at Bristol was when Chase Briscoe decided to do Chase Briscoe things and wreck Tyler Reddick and hand the win over to Kyle Busch. Other than that, most of the races there have been pretty ho-hum. I will say, from a green flag passing standpoint, what we saw at Bristol Dirt, they had 3,699 green flag passes last year on the dirt. This year's Cup Series race had 3,589 green flag passes. A lot of that number is contributed to the fact that they had massive amounts of tire wear, tire issues, people diving to pit road, people driving at less than highway speed, residential speed, as Freddie Kraft so not eloquently pointed out on Door Bumper Clear this week. Um, so a lot of things played into it. But back to the original question, does NASCAR belong on dirt? Again, I think there's a case to possibly be, possibly be made for it. And unfortunately, I just don't think that you need to cover up an existing asphalt or concrete track to accomplish that dirt goal. I think that if you're going to do a dirt race, you have to go to an actual dirt track. Bristol dirt just really never felt that fun. It was always like, ah, I feel like we're being robbed of the best short track in the country. And we were being robbed for three years. We had to endure Bristol dirt. And I know some people liked it. They liked the gimmick and everything like that. And that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But if you're going to do a dirt race, do like what the Truck Series did and go to an actual dirt track. Truck Series went to Eldora and they went to Knoxville. There's two perfect examples of where NASCAR could consider going. I don't know if the relationship with Tony Stewart is good enough at the moment to go back to Eldora. And it certainly doesn't seem like the people in Knoxville gave a crap about having stock cars on dirt. I mean, at one point, Stuart Friesen's wife, Jessica Friesen, did flip over and the Fox broadcast just didn't even mention it. And I know some of you don't remember that the same way you don't remember like Bruce Willis is in Pulp Fiction. You're like, oh, yeah, he doesn't remember it either. So don't worry. But the Bristol dirt races and the Knoxville dirt races just didn't really seem to capture everyone's attention the same way that Eldora did. Eldora, of course, is in the hotbed of sprint car country, the same way with Knoxville. But Eldora did a great job of capitalizing on the momentum, being the first dirt track uh, in NASCAR in like 50 years or something crazy like that. Unfortunately, they just never were able to really recreate that magic with Knoxville or with Bristol. And could they go to another place, Williams Grove, the Charlotte dirt track, or someplace along those lines? Sure, maybe. But is it going to be able to recreate that magic? Does it have the infrastructure to hold everything? And honestly, I just don't think it does. Eldora and Knoxville are the two most perfect examples of places that they could go. You could maybe argue that that Lucas Oil dirt track in uh, Missouri could also be a solid place for them to go. But at the end of the day, you have to have that infrastructure there. And I just don't know if any dirt tracks have it on the level that they need to have it to host a cup race or even an Xfinity race who still has yet to race on dirt. At the end of the day, I just don't think stock cars belong on dirt. And I didn't miss it this past week when we went to Bristol. Unless, of course, you want to get rid of like a Richmond or a Phoenix or something like that and replace it with a dirt race. You could probably convince me 
to do that. But definitely could convince me to do that. Hey, if you want to recover a racetrack in dirt, I think Richmond might be the perfect spot for you to be able to do that at. It'd be very weird, but they did it in NASCAR Heat 5. Why can't you just do it in real life? Duh, come on, make it happen. Regardless, I just don't think that the ratings are really there for dirt racing. I think it's a fine one-time gimmick. And if you want to have the all-star race or the clash at a dirt track, by all means, make it happen. But in terms of a points-paying race, yeah, the gimmick fell off after the first year. And it didn't really seem like people minded that much, which is totally fine uh, because that's kind of what gimmicks do, right? And I think Marcus Smith and his team at SMI saw that. So, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, does NASCAR need a dirt race? I don't think so. I think they have a really good schedule as it is. I think the 2025 schedule is going to be even better. But, again, I can be swayed on this opinion. And if there's a good argument to be made for dirt racing, then by all means, load these cars up and let's go to a dirt track. At the end of the day, though, there's really good dirt racing all around the country between Lucas Oil Late Model Series, as well as High Limit Sprint Car, World of Outlaw Sprint Car. If you want to watch good dirt racing, there's plenty of avenues for you to be able to do that on cars that are actually designed to be on dirt, not NASCAR Cup Series cars or trucks or Xfinity cars. So let me know in the comments, should NASCAR have a dirt race? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.